The idea for this presentation came from one of Kuldeep Singh's daughters. Uh, last year, she looked at a description of a feat performed by Truman Henry Safford. He was a 10-year-old at the time, he was born in 1836, and he was asked to multiply in your head these two numbers. And there's a picture of him, because he flew around the room like a top, pulled his pantaloons over the top of his boots, bit his hand, rolled his eyes in his sockets, sometimes smiling and talking, and then seeming to be in an agony, until in not more than one minute, said he, this. So Kuldeep's daughter was curious about how he did it, and uh, Kuldeep passed on the message to me. And I realised that I had never checked this, I didn't know how he did it, and I have never checked that it's correct. So I looked at a way of using Vedic maths to multiply these two numbers. So how did he do it, and is the answer correct? We can't really say how he did it, we don't know what went on in his head. It's not a possible question to answer, but we are going to work it out. So we'll come back to that in a few minutes. Well, patterns, patterns are very important, especially in mathematics. For one thing, they're very appealing. So if you see a pattern somewhere, it makes it easy. It makes it easy to remember. And it also suggests there's some cause or law. So we have a little fun here looking at some patterns in mathematics. And maybe the most obvious one is the nine times table, because here you've got the nine, eight, seven, six on the right here, decreasing one at each time, so by one less than the one before. And in the tens column, you've got the digits increasing by one more each time, so by one more than the one before. And so you can have a lot of fun with that in classes. You can ask how this can be extended and what happens down here, something a bit strange, because after zero we go back to nine and so on. Also, of course, we've got this beautiful vertically and crosswise multiplication pattern, which enables us to multiply any two numbers together in one line, from left to right or right to left. So if we wanted to multiply 21 by 23, for example, we would first of all multiply on the left here, the tens, 2 times 2 is 4. And then we multiply crosswise the 1 times the 2 and the 2 times the 3. So this way we get 2 this way we get 2 3s are 6, and we add those up, 2 and 6 is 8, and that goes in the middle there. And then to complete the pattern, we multiply on the right, 1 times 3 is 3. And in fact this is reversible, so given the 4, 8, 3 and the 23, you could deduce what the missing number was, and that is in fact division. We are actually in solving this problem, we are dividing 4, 8, 3 by 23. And you can do it like this. You can say, well, what number must this be so that this vertical product gives you 4? Well, it's obviously a 2 there. Now, the 8 comes from the cross products, and you've got 6 here already, so you need 2 more. So this product must be 2, and so this is a 1. And you can check that 1 times 3 is 3, so there's no remainder. So that's a nice pattern and it's reversible as I said and you can do it from left to right or right to left you can do algebraic multiplications and divisions in exactly the same way and you can extend it to numbers of any size now here's a, what we might call a number symphony 1 times 1 is 1 11 times 11 is 121 one. 111 times 111 is 12321. Obviously there's a pattern here which will enable you to extend it as far as you like. So once you've seen the pattern, you can continue. Pattern number 2. 1 times 9 plus 2 equals 11. 12 times 9 plus 3 equals 111. Well, already we can see there's a pattern developing here, and you might be able to maybe predict the next one. There it is. So we look for the pattern, and then we might ask, can we extend it? 
but in this case, yes, we're going to get this one again, but with a 6 here, this will become a 7, and there'll be one more 1 here. So we can continue it. But symphony number 3, 1 times 8 plus 1 equals 9, 12 times 8 plus 2 equals 98. And again here, we've got a pattern developing. Can you see the pattern? Can you extend it? Can you explain it? So this is a lovely way of teaching children through patterns. Here's another one. Can you create a symphony of your own? Well, it's a different kind of symphony pattern. You look here, you'll see that you've got a fraction equal to 2, so the top number must be double the bottom number. But what's happened here is you've got all the digits from 1 to 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Can we do that with other numbers? For example, 3. Yes. And 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 all using the digits 1 to 9. Symphony number 6. Ah, square numbers. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. Here we've got 3 square numbers equal to 2 square numbers. You can see how they continue. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Is it possible to predict the next line? Interesting problem. Symphony number 7, we've got 1 squared equals 1 cubed. 1 plus 2 squared is 1 cubed plus 2 cubed. 1 plus 2 plus 3 squared is 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed. So another nice pattern using squares and cubes. I got these from this website, Kevin Carmody's website, and there are some other symphonies and things there as well. It's a really nice website. So here is the symphony of number one again. And suppose you want to multiply 222 times 333. I remember I did actually give this problem to a young lad. I was tutoring. He had broken his leg, falling through a roof, playing in a derelict building. And I was asked to go and sort of tutor him uh, in all his subjects, we did quite a lot of maths, and uh, at one point he sort of realised that I tended to do calculations mentally, and he started to do the same thing. So I thought, well, I'll show him some vertically and crosswise multiplication. And he quickly picked it up, he could multiply two two-figure numbers pretty quickly. And then I said, do you want to do it, take it further and multiply it to three-figure numbers? So he said yes. And so I gave him these two numbers. I, I taught him how to do it, uh, to explain it and everything. And I gave him these two numbers, 222 two, two times 333. Three, three. And after quite a long while, he gave me the answer, which was correct. <laughs> and he was truly amazed and delighted when he realised, when I told him that it was correct. It was quite an experience. Anyway, uh, we're going to do this here using our symphony. You'll notice that there's a factor of 2 in 222 two, two, and there's a factor of 3 in 333. Three, three. So if we take those out, the 2 and the 3, they give us 6 when they're multiplied. And we've got 111 squared as well, because it's contained in each of those numbers. But 111 squared we know is this number here, 12321. So we just need to multiply that by 6. Obviously we didn't do it like that. Um, he did it by vertically and crosswise multiplication, but it's a, it's a nice way of doing it. And here's another one, 22222 two, 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 times 55555. Five, five, five. I was giving a, a course in South England many years ago, and I'd shown the people how to do vertically and crosswise multiplication, and one of, the, one of the participants said, well, what if you've got really big numbers, like 22222 two, 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 times 55555? Five, 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 five. Well, he didn't realise what a gem he'd given me, because that was so easy to do. 
If you take out the factor of 2 from here, the factor of 5 from here, so you've got the 2 there, the 5 there, and then you've got 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 multiplied by itself here. And 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 is, of course, this one here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So we just need to put a 0 on the end because we multiply by 10, and that was it. One other thing is that some of these numbers have useful factors. So, for example, 111 is 3 times 37, and we can make use of that. Suppose we want to find 36 times 37. Well, there's a factor of 3 in that 36, so we can write it as 12 times 3 times 37. And then the 3 times the 37 is 111, so we want 12 times 111, which is very easy to do mentally because you've got 112, 10 12s, and 100 12s. You just add those up to get 1332, and so that's how you could do that. This number I'm going to make use of in the next section where we come back to Truman Henry Safford's problem. So let's look at that. He had to multiply these two numbers, and this was the answer he gave. Is it correct? Well, of course, we've got patterns in here. We've got the same number multiplied by itself, and we've got the 365 repeating six times. So we can make use of those facts. There's the number. Let's take out a factor of 365. It goes like this. You see, if you multiply it out, you get 365 here, 365 here, and so on. You get 365 six times, because there are six ones there. But we want to square this number, therefore we'll need this squared times this squared. Like that. Now let me assume that you know how to square a number that ends in 5. Do you remember? 365 squared, you'd multiply the 36 by the number after it, and then put 25 on the end. Well, we just did 36 times 37 on the previous slide. 36 times 37 we found to be 1332, and then we just put 25 after it. Now to square this thing, in the bracket, we get this. It's like 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 squared, and that number squared was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So because we've got these zeros in, we have to put them in little triplets, and it works out like that. So now we've got a fairly easy problem of multiplying this number by 1, 3, 3, 2, 2, 5. And so we could start at this end and simply multiply that 1 by 133225. We get 133225. And then 2 times will give us double that. So there it is. Twice 133225 is there. That's double this one. And then 3 times it. You notice it steps over 3 places because these are in sets of 3 now. For 3 times we can do that plus that, because we've got two of those numbers and one of them, so three of them will be those two added up. For four of them we can double the two, this one here, which is this. For five we could add up the three and the two, these two, and we get this. For six we can do two of these, because this is three of those, one, three, three, two, two, fives. So we get this. 5, we've already had 5, it's this number here, so this number can come next, like that. And then the 4 is this number up there, 3, 2, and 1. Now if we add all of these up, we get this number, which is what Truman Henry Safford said. Correct.